Hi, and welcome to the lab. In today's segment, we're going to talk about using the Vernier LabQuest. The LabQuest is a digital data acquisition device, which is used to collect all sorts of different kinds of data in the lab or even in the field. The different probes we can connect we see over here. We have a current probe. We have a voltage probe, so we can measure voltage. We even have a GPS sensor, so we can connect this and get GPS coordinates. We have a spectrometer, and we have a temperature probe. All of these different probes connect to the LabQuest so we can make a measurement. So let's take a look at the LabQuest itself. The LabQuest is made of a few different uh, parts. First, we have a screen here, okay? And our screen, I'm gonna power on by hitting the power button, and it will go through a quick uh, calibration and setup. Once it gets to that main screen, we'll see uh, some new information, okay? We'll have some information about what kind of measurements we're going to take. And we also have a play button over here, which starts our experiment. And we also have a play button over here on the device, which we can actually just touch ourselves to look at the experiment. On the back of the unit, we have the different ports where we can plug in our probes. So there's channels one through four, and it doesn't matter what channel you use, uh, but they get plugged into those different channels. We have a large USB port, which is used for connecting the spectrometer and a small USB port, which is used for connecting to the unit to a computer so we can export data. And very importantly, hidden in here is a little stylus. If we pull this out, we can use the stylus so we can tap on the screen. On this side of the unit, we have digital inputs, which we're not going to end up using in the lab at all. And on this side, we have the port for the AC adapter. The unit does have batteries in it, so we can use it on battery in the field, or we can use it plugged into power when we're in the lab. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually plug in a probe so we can take a look at how it works, and I'm going to select the temperature probe, okay? All the probes have a common plug on them, and that plug will go right into the back of the unit. It only fits in one direction, so I'm going to turn the unit over and plug it in. And you should hear a little click. Once it gets plugged in, we'll then begin the, we'll see that there's a temperature reading. Now it's very easy to just begin recording temperatures like that, but we can also set up an experiment so it will record temperatures when we want the unit to record it or over a specific time frame, and that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to insert the temperature probe into a beaker of water, and we'll begin to see the temperature change as it goes into that beaker of water. Okay? Now if I want to set up an experiment uh, to, uh, in a certain way, I can change the mode, and that's where I tap on the screen over in the mode section, and I'll then get a dialog box. Okay, that dialog box is going to allow me to change the rate of sampling. Right now it's going to take two samples for every one second, and it's going to collect data for a total of 180 seconds, and I'm going to make some changes to that. So if I tap in the box, I can then bring up a little text box here. I'm going to delete the two, by highlighting it, clicking delete, and then hit one, okay? I also want to change my sampling time from 180 seconds to 500 seconds, okay? So we now have one sample per second at 500 seconds, okay? And that's going to be time-based. We also have a few different options for how we want to collect data. We could just collect them as selected events, which means that we will keep data when we want it to. If we're ready to collect a point at a certain time, we just hit okay. And we also have some involving the spectrometer, which is full spectrum, okay? In this case, we're going to use the time-based experiment. So I'm going to close that little drop-down menu, hit OK, and it's going to go back to the screen there. And we see that same data here, one sample per second in 500 seconds, and here's my temperature. I'm then going to begin the acquisition process by hitting the play button on the bottom, but I could also have hit it right here with my finger. And it will begin recording data. And we can see this little red ball floating across the screen. And we see the same numbers over here on the screen. If I take the temperature probe out of the water, we'll see the temperature change a little bit. Okay. And if I put it back into the water, I can see it go back. Okay. This may not zoom in very much right now. When the experiment is all done, either at the end of the 500 seconds or when you decide the experiment is done, you can hit the stop button. And when you tap the stop button, it will actually stop the uh, data acquisition. And we can see very close up in the zoomed in view what happened when I took it out of the beaker and put it in my hand. Okay, so we can see that on the graph screen. We can also tap, there's a small little box in the top which says XY. 
and we can look at the XY data, and we can see time versus temperature in a very nice table. Okay. Now, once the graph is, once the data is all done, the experiment is all set. I probably want to get this off of the lab quest and onto a computer, so I can go to File and save the data. Okay, and I can save the data right onto the lab quest by entering a new name for the unit for the uh, file, or if I can connect this to the LabQuest directly to a computer, and then I can export the file if I so choose. Okay? So I have a couple different options with saving, and you'll be told what you want to do. There's also a few different things you can do in terms of graphing. You can choose to uh, auto-scale. You can change some options involving the y-axis values and what, what units are going to be used. And you also have some abilities to analyze looking at statistics such as maximum and minima. Okay? So those are the basic functions on how to use the LabQuest. When we're all done using it, we just unplug the probe, turn off the power, and put it away. And that's how we use the LabQuest in the lab.